Let's go to Victoria now, though, and catch up with Liberal MP Gladys Liu, who's the member for Chisholm. Thanks for joining us, Gladys. Uh, appreciate your time. I want to get Good your to thoughts you. uh, first off, as, as a Victorian MP, uh, is there anything about the lockdown, uh, what's ha happened in, in the last couple of weeks, uh, locking down those uh, Housing Commission towers and now the whole of the state? Is there anything about this that concerns you? Oh, well, it certainly is very concerning. Um, the good thing is um, the uh, federal government is doing its best to provide uh, uh, all the support uh, that we need. So uh, we will all work together and uh, I'm confident that uh, we will get through this. Has Daniel Andrews managed the situation adequately, especially the state-based quarantine procedures? Well, look, I think uh, we have a lot of uh, commentaries about uh, what uh, the Victorian government can do. Uh, I won't get there because um, I'm sure a lot of people have already um, to share their, their views on this. Uh, the most important thing is um, we will provide all the support that they need, uh, which we are doing, uh, including the ADF. Um, and, uh, so um, the, the tracing uh, and also uh, with uh, the general support for the public. Now, do you support uh, your own government's decision on the visas, special uh, safe haven vi visas for Hong Kong residents, uh, effectively giving Hong Kong residents uh, uh, a smooth path to Australian residency? Absolutely, Chris. Um, I think um, the announcement made by Prime Minister Scott Morrison yesterday uh, uh, was the, the right one, uh, and uh, it definitely is a good one, not only for... Uh, Australians, but also for people of Hong Kong. But the Chinese government, uh, through its embassy in Canberra, has said that this is a deplorable measure and uh, deplorable criticisms of their regime. Well, you know, uh, Australia won't get intimidated easily and uh, we will stand up what is right and fair. Well, of course, Australia's also uh, suspended the extradition treaty with Hong Kong. Uh, we don't have an extradition treaty with uh, China. We're effectively saying that Beijing's security law in Hong Kong erodes the uh, law and order processes, the judicial processes in Hong Kong. Is that the right call? Well, uh, it is the right call to cancel the extradition um, agreement uh, because uh, what we do is to protect people, especially Australians um, uh, here, uh, and also uh, uh, just look at the uh, students, the international students, and also the skilled workers from Hong Kong uh, currently in Australia. So um, this extradition uh, change that is going to protect people because um, we just don't know. We don't know um, the new national security law, uh, what it covers uh, about uh, what you can and you cannot say. Well, so we, we, we do know a bit about it. Do you agree that the new national security law undermines the law and order processes, the access to, to free and fair justice in Hong Kong? Well, um, as we know, the uh, one country, two system arrangement between the China and the United Kingdom at the time was based on this understanding that uh, um, people in Hong Kong can have the uh, auto um, uh, autonomy. So with a law uh, set out completely and single-handedly by China without the consultation of uh, people and uh, the de legislature and uh, judiciary uh, in Hong Kong, um, I don't think this is something that Hong Kong people want. So is Beijing then in breach of the Joint Declaration Agreement? Well, the thing is, um, we look at the people in Hong Kong at the moment, from what I can see and what I've been told, uh, they are very careful in terms of what they are uh, going to say and what they will do. Um, and most of them, they would prefer to zip and uh, be silent. So now this is not uh, what uh, a basic human right that you and I enjoy, and that is freedom and democracy. So, and that's why I think it is absolutely right that uh, what the federal government is doing here in Australia. Even though Beijing says we're meddling in China's internal affairs? Well, what we do is uh, we are modifying our um, our sovereignty, uh, our um, immigration sovereignty, and also well, what we are elected to do to represent, and that's what we do um, according to the, the change. And that is the 
as we can see the fundamental change of circumstance at the moment. So what? we are just doing what we need to do as Australian government to protect Australians. We're not meddling in internal Chinese affairs? What we are doing here is to have the immigration policy change that is giving the uh, extension of visa to uh, students and uh, skilled workers. And we are also um, alerting our people, Australians, uh, do not travel. And that is the travel warning um, because when you get there, you just don't know what you can say and what you cannot say. Now, you, you must have looked with interest, given the controversies you've been involved in before, given your relationship with Chinese organisations, you must have looked with interest at the investigation into New South Wales Labor MP Shaquette Mosselmane about alleged political interference uh, by China. Are you concerned by that? Well... Uh, my position has never changed because what is uh, what is uh, my belief and my values is a democracy and also fairness, and uh, it has never changed. Uh, and uh, as you can see, um, the the statements that I have put out today or yesterday actually, uh, and a year ago uh, in July, and I have always been supporting uh, the democratic movements of China, of Hong Kong people. Yeah, now, what I'm interested in, though, is that uh, we hear a lot about uh, Chinese efforts to interfere in Australian politics. We know very publicly now this investigation is going on regarding Shaquette Mosselmane. There was the controversy about your membership of the Chinese Overseas Exchange Association, a Communist Party-linked organisation. You seem to be unclear about your status with that group. Do you believe that perhaps you were the subject of an attempted interference in Australian democracy? Well, I guess you can say, um, first of all, uh, the so-called membership, um, it was uh, 2003, and I wasn't an active member at all, and that's why I basically forgot the whole thing, that they still had me as the honorary president or honorary advisor, whatever they call it. Um, the reality is I never had any active uh, involvement. I didn't even know who they were, but... Uh, they said I was a member there. However, when you look at the difference is when I, before I got elected in 2015, I already stopped everything, all right, uh, at the, the membership because I didn't, I, I, it's just never part of my life here. Yeah, no, I, and, I, understand, I understand that. Sorry to rush you along. I understand that, Gladys Liu, but my question about that is given that relationship, given the fact that uh, the China Overseas Exchange Association seemed to think that you were part of their organisation, do you believe that that could have been an attempt to interfere politically in Australia through you, unwittingly? OK. Well, first of all, um, I don't think they see me as part of them, OK? I have to make it very clear. And secondly, I'm not part of them. And thirdly, um, I definitely do not agree with any interference from any country to, um, to our country and our system here. Gladys Slew, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Chris. Gladys Slew there, Liberal MP for Chisholm uh, in Melbourne. Fascinating to go through this, uh, that Chinese history because, as you uh, re will recall, so there's a centre of uh, considerable controversy along those lines last year.